This video provides guidance for doctors on the basic principles of medical certification of cause of death and highlights common errors made in certification. After watching this video, doctors will be equipped with the knowledge to avoid these common errors and thus produce more accurate certificates. The video is divided into five sections. The importance of correct death certification. Frame A of the International Form of Medical Certificate of Cause of Death. Common Errors to Avoid. Key Certification Principles and Assessing the Quality of Cause of Death Certification. Section 1. The Importance of Correct Death Certification. Everyone wants to live longer and enjoy life with their loved ones. Because of this, death is often a feared word. But, if explored correctly, each death can teach us lessons in preventing or delaying another. Accurate cause of death data offers a significant public health benefit. When quality causes of death data are available, policymakers within governments can better plan and evaluate health interventions. These interventions can help to prevent deaths and hence increase life expectancy. In addition to providing answers for family and loved ones of the deceased, the death certificate is also important for legal and insurance purposes. A significant proportion of patients in all countries either die or are exposed to a hospital or other health facility just prior to death. In hospital settings, a qualified medical certifier, typically a doctor, is expected to document the cause of death by completing a medical certificate of cause of death. After completion, the death certificate is submitted to a central statistical agency where it undergoes a process called mortality coding. Mortality coding is the translation of causes of deaths from text into alphanumeric codes. This coding provides the baseline cause of death data for many countries. In the process of coding, a single underlying cause is assigned for each death. This cause is coded according to the standards set out in the World Health Organization's International Statistical Classification of Diseases and Related Health Problems, or ICD. As mortality coding is based on the details provided on the death certificate, when those details are inaccurate, the production of correct mortality data for public health interventions cannot be achieved. As a doctor, you have a vital role to play in this process. Section 2. Frame A of the International Form of Medical Certificate of Cause of Death. Now, we will have a closer look at the cause of death section of the WHO's International Form of Medical Certificate of Cause of Death. Frame A of the Medical Certificate of Cause of Death has two parts, Part 1 and Part 2. Part 1 consists of four lines. These lines are labelled as 1A, 1B, 1C and 1D. The sequence of events leading directly to death is documented in part 1. Starting in line 1A, the immediate cause of death is documented with each preceding cause documented in the lines below. If the death was a consequence of another disease or condition, this underlying cause should be entered on line 1B. Moving on to lines 1C and 1D if there were more events leading to the death. Only one condition should be documented per line. The death certificate allows up to four conditions to be recorded in a logical sequence. The condition recorded in the lowest use line is usually regarded as the underlying cause of death. In rare situations, there could be more than four conditions in the sequence leading to death. In this case, a line 1E can be added and the underlying cause of death recorded in that line. Alternatively, Two conditions can be entered in the lowest use line, writing due to in between. The underlying cause of death should never be recorded in part two of the death certificate. The circumstances of death from a motor vehicle accident, suicide or homicide are known as external causes of death. In cases where the death occurs as a consequence of injury or violence, the external cause should always be listed as the underlying cause. All other causes that may have contributed to the death but did not take part in the direct sequence of events should be documented in part two. The column on the far right hand side of the death certificate is for recording the approximate time interval between the onset of the condition or conditions 
and the death. The time interval should be entered for all conditions reported on the death certificate, including those documented in part two. These intervals are usually established by the doctor on the basis of available information. In some cases, the interval will have to be estimated. Time periods such as hours, days, weeks, months or years can be used. Section 3. Common errors to avoid. Let's look at some of the most common errors made by doctors in the process of medically certifying causes of deaths. Illegible handwriting is one of the most frequent errors made by certifiers. When the details written on the death certificate are illegible, coding and the selection of the underlying cause of death by the coders becomes difficult, even if the details provided are correct. In such cases, it becomes highly likely that the reported conditions are erroneously interpreted and coded. This outcome is a waste of the valuable time and resources spent on both the certification and coding processes. A similar outcome is also possible when abbreviations are used for medical conditions. Since most abbreviations are not standard, it's very likely that the acronyms are interpreted differently by different people. As an example, HT may reflect, among other interpretations, hypertension, heart transplantation or hormone therapy. DK may mean diabetic ketoacidosis or DK phocomelia syndrome. Another common error is a lack of documentation of time intervals between each condition and death. Time intervals are very useful in the coding of certain conditions. For example, to decide whether a stroke is coded as an acute case of stroke or a sequelae of stroke, the time interval is helpful. Time intervals in part one of the certificate, when correctly reported, are always in a descending order from the bottom upwards. Time intervals may also be useful for the certifier to check the accuracy of the sequence. Recording an incorrect or clinically improbable sequence of events leading to death is another error frequently made by certifiers. As mortality statistics are based on the underlying cause of death, which is the condition or injury that initiated the sequence of events leading to death, line 1A must always contain the immediate or direct cause of death. Line 1A must also never be left blank. In some cases, the entry on line 1A may be the only condition reported in part one of the certificate. Where there are two or more conditions that form part of the sequence of events leading directly to death, each event in the sequence should be recorded on a separate line. The WHO ICD guidelines state that only one cause should be recorded per line on the death certificate. When more than one cause is reported on a single line, it makes it difficult for coders to establish the sequence of events leading to death and select the correct underlying cause of death. Entering ill-defined or vague conditions on the death certificate are also errors. These are of no value to public health officials as they do not provide any useful information to help design preventative health programs. Ill-defined and unusable causes of death do not serve the purpose of guiding better health planning. For example, cardiorespiratory arrest and heart failure are considered ill-defined causes as they are modes of dying that do not provide useful information for the planning of interventions to prevent death. Similarly, symptoms or signs such as headache, fever and intermediate causes such as portal hypertension or secondary hypertension do not provide useful evidence and should therefore be avoided. For deaths due to neoplasms, additional details are required which certifying doctors often leave out. Different neoplasms of the same organ may have different etiologies and prognoses which may be helpful in planning specific interventions. Reporting the site, behavior and morphology of neoplasms provides optimum information for use by policymakers. When certifying deaths from injuries, poisonings or other external causes, the circumstances of the accident or violence should be reported as the underlying cause of death, not the injury. The external cause should also be described in as much detail as possible. For example, motor vehicle accident is too broad. Instead, pedestrian hit by motor car at public highway is better as it provides important details for prevention. 
A vehicle accident may happen in a traffic or non-traffic setting, and the victim may be the driver, passenger or a pedestrian. These details should not be left off the certificate. Similarly, a case of poisoning may be intentional, accidental, undetermined intent or due to an adverse effect in therapeutic use. Specification of all of these circumstances are essential to accurately code the cause of death. Section 4. Key Certification Principles Now, let's summarise some key principles in completing the cause of death section on the death certificate. Write the sequence of events leading to death in Part 1 and the contributory causes which are not included in this sequence in Part 2. Do not write multiple causes in a single line. Make sure that the time intervals are recorded for all the causes mentioned in both Parts 1 and 2. Assuming the sequence of events is accurate, the time sequence in Part 1 will be written in an ascending order from line 1A downwards. Look at these examples. Write legibly and ensure that no abbreviations are used to represent medical conditions. Look at these examples. Check whether the sequence of events in Part 1 is logical and clinically correct. As mentioned previously, when the sequence is correct, the time intervals will be in an ascending order from line 1A downwards. Double check and ensure that the underlying cause reported is not an ill-defined cause. Always ask whether the underlying cause of death recorded could be a result of another condition. If so, look for the evidence of the originating cause of death. It's also important to check that the recorded underlying cause is not a mode of dying, not a symptom or sign, or not an intermediate or unspecified cause. If the death is due to an accident, violence or poisoning, the circumstance of the accident or violence will be regarded as the underlying cause. Additional information such as the place of occurrence, the victim's activity and intent and so on should always be included. Look at these examples. When the underlying cause is a neoplasm, remember to mention details about the site, behaviour and the morphology. Look at these examples. Section 5. Assessing the Quality of Cause of Death Certification The University of Melbourne, through the Bloomberg Philanthropies Data for Health initiative, has prepared a checklist that can be used to assess the quality of cause of death certification according to the prevalence of the common errors discussed in this video. Results from the quality assessment can be expressed in three ways. The first method produces percentages of each error category. The second method produces an expression of the percentage of certificates with no errors, one to two errors, and more than two errors. The third method is the assignment of a judgmentally validated weighted score and a classification of overall quality for each certificate. The checklist can be administered as a paper-based version, an offline version, or a Microsoft Excel version. The Excel and offline versions provide automated results and printable output templates. Further details and resource materials are available freely on the University of Melbourne's CRVS Knowledge Gateway. Let us be a little more cautious and concerned about the quality of cause of death certification. Remember that your small contribution will create a big difference in ensuring people live happier, healthier and longer lives.